From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's Friday, October 20th. Let's get started. We cannot and will not let terrorists like Hamas and tyrants like Putin win. I refuse to let that happen. A presidential pushback against those who upset peace in our world. Will the words of President Joe Biden get the money to support war efforts on two fronts? Plus, the nation's for security. community conversations as Bay Area voices rise, calling for help and healing in difficult times. The car broke into the building, driving to the lobby, and the driver have a gun. New information about what happened in a deadly police shooting at San Francisco's Chinese consulate. We've got the new images of the moments before and after police say they were forced to fire. Not all of our friends and neighbors are as ready as we are. Get-togethers with a goal of getting ready. Parties offering dinner and disaster preparedness. If there's one rose that I pick again and again and again for the house, it's that. And on a Friday morning, we pause to look at beauty finding hope in flowers. Meet the man who shows you how to be gentle during tough times. Yes, indeed, your community station this morning, hoping you have a great Friday morning, and that is your homework assignment. Go outside when the sun comes up, find one thing to be grateful for. Thank you for watching. I'm Reed Cowan. That is a beautiful assignment. Mm. I am grateful for all of you. You guys Same. know that. I say it every single day that I get to walk into work, and it doesn't feel like work. I'm Nicole Zalimis. So nice. It does not feel like work. I'm Gianna Franco, and I am grateful that it is Friday, <laughs> that we actually have a weekend to get ready to enjoy, and hopefully you've got some fun plans. And Jess, the weather was really nice yesterday in some spots like along the coast I know it was really only hot along elsewhere. the coast I know I know I say that with you know I understand yeah you live along the coast where it was beautiful because you guys what hit the upper 70s oh, and so you know pretty. off into the East Bay Nicole how was your experience I yesterday? did hot yoga I was outside in my bathing suit got a little suntan okay. in October I cannot complain we so published those photos from her neighbor <laughs> online this morning she made the best of it <laughs> She did make the best of it. And you know what? I hope the people in the East Bay did make the best of it yesterday, but we have a big change today. Let's talk about it. Nicole, I'm sorry. Your hot yoga is canceled as we head into this afternoon. It's a lot cooler as we head into our afternoon daytime highs, but let's start off with current conditions this morning. Throughout the Bay Area, we're talking about 60s from San Jose over into Livermore, 60s all the way off into the East Bay and some upper 50s actually in the forecast for us right now, anywhere from Oakland over into San Francisco. So nice and cool to kick off the morning. And that heat wave is off into the east now, so we're really just left with mild conditions and cloudy skies into this afternoon. Here's that area of high pressure, that heat wave that moved its way in. It's moving its way out, and low pressure is replacing it from the Gulf of Alaska. And you know what this is going to do for us into the weekend? It's going to bring cloudier skies, a chance of showers, and windier conditions, too. So here's what we're looking at right now, just today alone. Cloudy skies for us, not a lot to talk about. It'll be mild for most of us, sunnier conditions down into the South Bay. And all the way into the weekend we go, the big change for us, well, Cooler temperatures for the most part. I mean, yesterday's heat wave broke records in much, most of the Bay Area, actually, down into the South Bay and all the way up into the North Bay. But now we're talking about rain as early as 4 a.m. on Sunday morning. So many of us will just be sleeping in, relaxing on our weekend. Here's what's happening as we head into the afternoon hours. 7 a.m., still light scattered showers in the forecast for us, and that'll continue to track off into the east with lingering showers into the afternoon. Gianna? All right, just thank you. Let's talk about those freeways this Friday morning and looking pretty good overall. In fact, here's a live look at conditions along the Nimitz. That's 880 right there, both directions near the Coliseum, and we're not seeing any major issues or brake lights. So far, so good. It is Friday light, so hopefully it stays that way. Starting to get a little bit of a backup at the Bay Bridge Toll Plaza. Meteor lights were just turned on just a couple minutes ago, and now we're just seeing it slightly just right there in those middle lanes. So if you are headed towards the Bay Bridge, you'll just have a pinch of slowing, and other than that, it's looking pretty good the rest of the way and no fog at the Golden Gate. Nice. Okay, well, chances are you listened to President Joe Biden late last night addressing the world as war rages in Ukraine and Israel. Israel Hamas at war. And what you heard last night was a precursor to what is going to happen today. The leader of the free world is going to be asking your elected representatives to greenlight billions of dollars of American money to help Ukraine and Israel's fights against Hamas and Russia. The president trying to remind all of us why he says the help matters. American leadership is what holds the world together. American alliances will keep us, America, safe. American values are what make us a partner that other nations want to work with. To put all that at risk, if we walk away from Ukraine, if we turn our backs on Israel, it's just not worth it. 
So let's go from American values to American dollars. We dug in for answers about what that money would do. Well, $60 billion would help Ukraine. 14 billion would help Israel and 26 billion would go towards humanitarian aid and border security. But here's the catch. Republicans this morning still haven't been able to find unity on who should lead them as Speaker of the House. Keep in mind, the House controls the nation's purse strings. So for now, that purse is tied up in congressional politics. We're watching that very close. Well, also something to watch this morning, California's Governor Gavin Newsom is in Israel. He met with Israel's President Isaac Herzog. California is sending medical supplies to the war-torn region, and as you're seeing here in photos new to our newsroom, Mr. Newsom is boosting his national profile, leading a lot of people to wonder if this isn't a run-up to a potential presidential run. Well, after Israel today, Governor Newsom heads to China for a summit focusing on climate change. But let's come home right now, where a community conversation continues as all of our neighbors lament the violence in the Middle East. To the mission now, where we found a candlelight vigil for all of the innocents killed in Israel's war against Hamas, Andrea Nakano picks up the story from here. Shraga Hasid. The names of those that have lost their lives in the war were read at this outdoor vigil in San Francisco. People stood with a candle in one hand and a flower in the other. To take a break from all of the contention and the chaos and the toxicity of social media, to be here, um, to really center the people who've lost their lives feels really important. Lala Wu and her family have been deeply impacted by the conflict. They are constantly worried about their family members in Israel and welcome the help the president is offering. I think it's really important that the U.S. stand up for what is right, and sometimes it's not always super clear what that is. Many, though, fear most of the aid will come in the form of weapons. I mean, just more money for arms. You know, I, the, the arms have to be people holding arms with each other, throwing away the arms and joining together. That's what I want to see. It's very hard to know what the right thing is. The only thing I think is that killing each other is not the right thing. As difficult as this war has been, this night brought some hope and healing people gathering to pray for peace around the world. I'm trying really hard to cling on to hope, even though it feels like a really hopeless situation in a lot of ways. Manny's usually holds gatherings inside, but he says he just wanted to offer this parklet area so that people can get out the message of peace to the community. Local groups are letting their voices be heard, calling for an immediate ceasefire on both sides. Yesterday in San Francisco, demonstrators outside the federal building chained themselves to the walls in a protest that filled a city block. Others carried the Palestinian flag along with signs that read Americans for Palestine and Pelosi ceasefire now. I have family inside this room and in the West Bank. And they're, and they're scared to death. So this madness has to stop. The killing of women, innocent babies, innocent children has to come to an end. And the U.S. cannot be part of this war. Earlier this week in Washington, Representative Cory Bush introduced a resolution calling for, quote, an immediate de-escalation -escal and ceasefire in Israel and occupied Palestine. Meanwhile, Representative Barbara Lee has joined Bush along with nearly a dozen other lawmakers in support. The State Department has issued a rare worldwide caution alert for U.S. citizens overseas due to increased tensions and the potential for terrorist attacks. Now, we're going to have more on these precautions for travelers in a live report in our next half hour. From overseas to here at home, we're closely tracking all of the developments. Find us streaming on CBS News Bay Area and online at KPIX.com.